Hello, everyone. Hello. So thankful to be together in combined services. We don't get to do it often, but it's truly an honor every time we get to. And I encourage all of you to join our ASL class starting September 10th. Okay, who's responsible for the PowerPoint clicker? Who do I look at? Is someone up there? Wave at me. Oh, up there in the corner. Oh, okay. Maybe they'll bring me the clicker. Sabrina's bringing it to me. She loves me. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Okay, I got the clicker. Now where do I point it? Okay, like that. Okay, you see this picture? We're talking about the commandments versus tradition. Tradition is man-made laws and customs. You ready to delve in? So in Matthew 15, verses 1 through 2, they're talking about the Pharisees and the scribes, very smart, learned men of the time. And they came to Jerusalem... They came to Jesus from Jerusalem, and they were talking in the morning. They didn't like what was going on. Now, understand, this trip that Jesus took from Jerusalem took probably six days of walking. So, boom, he arrives, the scribes and the Pharisees, they've worked themselves into a frenzy, and they're ready to approach him. And they say, why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? Now, they're talking about man-made traditions that have passed on through the years, right? Specifically, the one regarding washing your hands. Jesus was like, hmm, okay. Now, again, let's look at this word traditions. It's not, the, specifically, the washing the hands was not a command that only existed for ordinary people. It was a specific requirement that the Levites did in preparation for offering sacrifices to the God. Now, the Pharisees and the scribes, they thought we should be the same, and specifically, the disciples should be the same. But again, traditions are man-made laws, not God-ordained laws right? This is something that the Pharisees and the scribes who consider themselves experts in the laws and in human traditions, but again, it was their own religious interpretation of the law that God had given to the former leaders for a specific purpose, and they added and took away as they wanted and then said they followed the traditions of the old time, and it was hard to do these traditions. Some of them were tight. Some of them had a lot of time involved, now, I grew up as a Catholic myself, and we were told to believe in tradition because it was the word of God. That's what we were told. Yes, it was the word of God, and it had equal authority with the Bible. Now, as an adult, I'm like, oh, really? Equal authority with God's word? Hmm. Okay, so we can just add whatever we want to the law and take away. No, we got to do what the Bible says. If it's in the Bible, do so. If it's not, we don't do it. Jesus, he knew what he was doing, right? He worked hard to set up this, these words for us to follow. The Pharisees and the scribes were but temporary men. Jesus' word was for our benefit, not for other men to look at us. So as baptized members, we follow the Lord Jesus Christ, period, right? Right? We've looked at traditions, now let's look at God's commandments, those that speak directly to our heart. Again, when the Pharisees and scribes asked, why do your disciples not follow the traditions? Jesus answered them and said, why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your own tradition? Father told you to honor your mother and your father, and whoever insults their mother and father will surely die. But you say... If anyone tells his father or his mother, like, I've gained nothing from you. I only gained stuff from God. I gained nothing from you. What would have gained from me is given only from God. 
he's indeed not honoring his father. He's twisting the words of God and not honoring his parents. And so the, for the sake of your tradition, you have rejected the word of God. You have broken the commandments. That's pretty strong language from Jesus. This is an English word, lip service, or hypocrisy, as the Bible calls it, right? In Matthew 15, verse 7, I, Jesus said, you are hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he spoke for God about you. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I actually had misquoted that. But again, you are hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he spoke for God about you. Matthew 15, verse 7. The people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain, they do not worship me. Oh, they look all righteous, but it's fake. It's not real. It's not in their heart. It's just an action, an outward action. For they worship me in vain, teaching doctrines as commandments, but they're really from man. Woo, woo, woo. We got to be careful when we do that. We got to follow the Bible, the words in the Bible. We do not change it or twist it. For it says, Jesus has labeled them as hypocrites. Do you want to be labeled as a hypocrite? I would think not. So make sure your actions are matching your words and your heart. Right? We're not actors. We're not performing in a movie of religion. Right? We are real people striving to be like God. And we should live like that. Don't try to copy tradition and be like other people. Practice Jesus Christ in your life. Don't put it on. You know, some people, they come to church, they're all sweet and kind, then they go home and they're yelling and screaming and cussing. Right? Don't fake it. Be Christians all the time. Right? Follow the law. You know, I see it happen so much. I'll see someone out in the world dressed one way, then they show up in dress, church dressed another way, right? Oh, and they look all good and professional. Oh, and I've seen gossip too. Gossip has caused people to leave the church of God because humans are breaking the law, right? Oh, I've seen it, and it's sad. It's really sad. And Jesus is said again that men sorry, the interpreter got a little lost. I was going too fast for my interpreter. Let me back up a moment. All right. <laughs> So Jesus was telling the story, and he said that people should not practice traditions because they make that tradition their law, right? And he said, prophets, you have to judge with the coming of the Lord. You have to overcome temptation to follow the tradition. He warned them, do not be like the hypocrites. Do not be like the men who love doing things and standing and having everyone look at them. No, you follow the law. You be ready for the coming of Jesus. And it's important that a lot of people who say, oh, yeah, yeah, I believe Jesus is coming. I love the Lord. Yeah, but then they don't behave like it. Love is an action, right? You have to behave about it. People watch your actions more than they love your words. Don't walk around saying, I love the Lord, I love the Lord, and then behave oppositely. Jesus is watching, right? And in Isaiah 29, it explains that he will that those who follow man-made law and study man-made law will be struck blind. God's way will be not visible to them. People are shocked to hear that God was that direct, but he is very direct about that. Amen? 
Now, this is my last bit before Stephen comes up and finishes our chapter for us. But it says, come close to God and God will come close to you. That's a promise. That's in the word of God, a promise to you. Yeah. God's word is forever. It does not dissolve. It does not go away. The earth is temporary. It goes away. But the word will not. It lasts forever. And Jesus said, if you come close to him, he will come close to you. Do you believe him? All right. So I'm going to pass the rest of the chapter over to my brother in Christ, my wonderful friend, Pastor Stephen. <laughs> love that guy. Don't we love Pastor Bill? Yeah. Thank you, bro, brother, for that amazing word from God. Um, and thank you all for being here as well. Uh, when Pastor Drew asked us to preach, I was praying that I would go first, so that, why, that way I wouldn't have to follow you, honestly. Uh, this is a guy who's got 30 years of experience, and I'm just me, you know? Uh, so, brother, uh, in Jesus' name, I pray that I will do my best. <laughs> Uh, but in all seriousness, it is an honor to stand here before you all this morning. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Stephen Gonzalez. I am the other less beautiful half of the two youth pastors here at OCFA. Uh, the most beautiful half uh, is my amazing wife, Pastor Sabs. She's making me look good up there uh, for the live stream. Uh, thank you, babe. Um, and a little bit about myself. I am 27 years old. I'm the son of two great missionaries to Japan, Juan Carlos and Colette Gonzalez, um, who we support here at this church as one of our missionaries. So, do we believe that missions is important here? Yes. Amen, yes. Uh, sometimes it's uh, my dad will wake up in the middle of the night because it's a different time zone, and he'll tune into the live streams. Uh, and so, Dad, if you're watching, I love you and I miss you. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, Yes, I'm a missionary kid. So first time I went to the mission field, I was about four months old, um, and I stayed there until I was about 14. I did high school here uh, at Braille Linda High School just down the street, um, and that's where I met Sabrina. Uh, didn't date, though, until after high school. Dated and then got married, and then now we're here. So again, like I said, it's an honor to be here. Uh, now, a little caveat, if I use improper grammar, uh, please forgive my sins. I am but a humble youth pastor, and I'm used to teaching in front of teenagers, so please forgive me. Um, but let's continue on with the chapter that Pastor Bill kind of led up to. Um, so we're going to be in Matthew chapter 15, verse 10 through 20. I have an awesome person named Josiah to come up and read the scripture for me. Can we give him a little hand? Thanks. I kind of sprung this on him last minute, too, but he's always willing to read it. So, you got it on your phone there? I believe I do. I just cool, cool. Yeah. Mm. If not, it's on the screens, too. Yeah. Okay, now I got it. Uh, Jesus called the crowd... Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were often offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them, they are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, explain this parable to us. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Uh, I think there's an actual next yeah. slide. Yeah. Too. Yeah, there we go. Are you still so dull, Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immor immorality, theft, false testimony, slant, and slander. 
These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it, bro. No problem. Yay. Uh, Pastor Drew and I share a really uh, confident belief that uh, the young are important in our church, and so that's one of the reasons why we have them share with us and read scripture, because we believe that if we can um, teach them the right things right now, then it'll be lasting in their whole life, and we as a church support that, yes? yes? Amen, amen, awesome. Now, in youth, we consistently talk about uh, a couple important things, one of those things being context. Okay? We have to understand where things come from, who it was written to, and so on and so forth. Um, so I want to take a, lo a look a, a little bit about this passage. During this time, it was part of the Jewish culture to be, um, like uh, Pastor Bill said, uh, in traditions and such. Um, it was important for them to be in a certain way and, and follow a certain way that actually dates all the way back to their time in the wilderness, um, even as far as eating the correct food and all such of things, okay? Um, now, they didn't have expensive uh, or experienced doctors or great medicine like we now have, so they had to be extra careful about, about what they ate, how they ate, and so on and so forth. They really couldn't just go down the street and eat McDonald's. That processed food really isn't that good for them. So uh, they really had to be careful. Um, with like washing their hands. However, the Pharisees took it to the extreme. They took it to exert control and flex their righteousness over others as well. So Jesus drops this banger and he says, hey, that's not the point. What comes out of your mouth is more important than what goes in. The Pharisees didn't like that at all. And, and the disciples told them that and Jesus said, that's okay. The blind uh, that they are blind guides, and the blind lead the blind, they will fall. Right after Jesus says this, the disciples just look at him like, what? Super confused. Now, let's, let's pause for a second. This happens a lot here, guys, that where, where Jesus will drop the most amazing wisdom ever to be on the face of the earth, and the, the disciples just stand there like, what? They don't get it. And honestly, I'm, I'm thankful for that because I need, I'm somebody that needs to be explained a couple times, right? And so Jesus takes them through it. Evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These things are more dangerous than simply washing your hands. If these are the things that we speak of, then these will do far more damage than anything we eat or consume. Jesus gets down to the heart of the matter and exposes the Pharisees, uh, the Pharisees' way of thinking, being flawed and far more dangerous. Now, I love the way that scripture is written sometimes because Matthew just kind of leaves it there. Uh, it doesn't say anything else, just kind of leaves it there and lets it simmer a little bit. Uh, and then he moves on to a story about a Canaanite woman. Now, if I could ask Kaylee to come up and read the next passage, that would be awesome. Yeah. Welcome. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. But what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall in a pit. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew, withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed demon and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, 
it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Kaylee. Yeah. So, here we have a story of a woman, but not just a woman, a Canaanite woman, which during this time effectively means non-Jewish, uh, living in that surrounding area. She finds Jesus, and she calls him, O oh Lord, Son of David. Now, that means something. She has knowledge of Jewish culture, even though she's not Jewish herself. She knows who he is and what he's done. She cries for her, Jesus, to take away the demon from her daughter. And at first, Jesus says, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm here for, for the Jews. But she persists. She is relentless in her faith. She, she drops to her knees and pleads for help. Then Jesus drops another parable saying that it's not right to throw food for children and give it to pets. Now, that seems about right, right? You can't make filet mignon and then just give it to the dog at home, right? And she gets it, right? But, but wait, wait, she understands it. But the disciples, the, the, the men that had been traveling with Jesus during this entire time, listening to how he speaks, how he preaches, how he does miracles and everything, they don't get it. They don't understand it. But this one foreign woman from nowhere is like, I get it. I, I, I can just imagine the disciples still standing there just kind of like, huh? They don't, they don't get it. And the woman is like, I get you, Jesus. She not only gets him, but she proceeds to show her faith. She says, yes, you're right, but pets can also get the leftovers. And what does that mean? She believes so strongly in Christ that it's, if it's crumbs that she can have, she'll rejoice in that. That's crazy. I, I couldn't. When I ask for God and, and I tell him, God, I have these struggles, I have these problems in front of me and everything, make it happen. I'm expecting a complete and utter like, answer to my prayer. And yes, I believe he has the ability to do that, right? But what if he doesn't? It, what if he just gives a little bit of something? Then I'm like, ah, oh, man, like, God, you're able to do so much. This woman will take anything. She will take the scraps. She will take the very, very crumbs. And what has come from her mouth was not evil thoughts, slander, none of that. It was good. What came from her mouth was good. These two stories that we've talked about this morning are in direct contrast to each other, uh, culturally and literally. On one hand, you have a male, male Pharisee leaders who are allowing their inner defilement to affect others in a negative way. Right? And, and they're supposed to be the pinnacle of, of, of Jewish culture, right? And on the other hand, you have a foreign female from nowhere, a nobody, who speaks her faith in order to save not herself. She's not doing it for selfish reasons. For who? Her daughter. It's powerful. And it shows that what we do and how we react is what defines us. So what do you want to be? I, I ask you, the church. We, we want to be followers of Christ. We want to follow him and do what's right and everything. So what do you do? Pastor Bill said the right thing. Sometimes me, even myself, I, I will act a certain way here at church and then sometimes not follow it when I go home. But it has to. We have to follow it to the letter. Now, I'll, I'll end with this. Um, and the band can come up right now if you guys want to. But is it all right if I can share with you guys a little bit about some things right now? 
Now, you guys might see me here and see, okay, well, that's a former missionary kid. I'm actually uh, two generations, second generation missionary kid and second generation pastor's kid. So I've got a lot of Jesus in my heritage. So it makes sense that I would be up here speaking to you guys this morning, right? You'd probably say, oh, man, he was like, he was destined to be in the mission field. He was destined to be preaching and doing all of these things. But the truth is far more rocky and far more ugly, I'm afraid. There was a point in my life, in my early adult life, where I had walked away from the Lord. I had served him my entire life, done the whole church thing, gone on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights, and done everything that I was supposed to do. Grew up in church, all of that. And I had thought I had seen it all, I had served him, but I, I would constantly look at the life that I was thought that I was being denied and, and, and getting, I see like all the people, all of my, my aged people going out and doing fun things and seeming like they have it all together. And for me, I thought, okay, maybe, maybe that's what I want. Maybe I don't need Christ. Maybe a life without him is better. And in doing so, I surrounded myself with evil thoughts, just like the Pharisees. I thought, maybe, maybe I can just make it on my own. I don't need anyone. Man, I was so wrong. And in the process of doing that, I, I hurt people. People that I love, people that I care about. I made mistakes. And part of that was dealing with this thing called depression. Have you guys heard of it? It's, it's a thing. It had taken over my body and to the point where it was like a fog everywhere around me, everywhere I, I went, I couldn't see, I couldn't feel anything. But then something happened. God happened. I think some of the most amazing things in the world happen after we say, but God. Amen? He showed up to me through so many people. One of those people being our own Pastor Drew. Sorry, I didn't tell you that I was going to tell you this story, but he took a chance on me, folks. He took a chance on a kid who was coming out of one of the darkest times of his life, but knew that he had a call in his life to do something in the ministry and wanted to be with teenagers, which is great. But he took a chance on a kid that had made all the mistakes and said, I, I'm not only going to, going to, take you in as you are. I'm going to make you my intern. I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know. I'm going to, I'm going to foster you. I'm going to feed you, which is also great for young people, by the way. And he just loved me. Guys, I have no idea where I would be if Pastor Drew didn't do that. And all he did was just listen to God. Now, I don't say all of this to make you guys look at me and say, Wow, like he's so great. He has such a great testimony. Isn't that so good? No. God is so good. God is so good. He was there for that foreign woman when he had when she had nothing but faith. She had nothing but faith. She had no social status. She had no meaning to her name, no lands or anything. All that she had was her faith. God was there for me when I had nothing. And he's here for you right now. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter what your social status is or, or, or anything along those lines. He is here for you, waiting for you to accept him. Now, maybe there's some people here who would say, I haven't been walking in faith. Maybe I'm not all the way right with Jesus. Uh, maybe I'm not where I want to be. Uh, 
now's the time. Don't wait. Because Christ is worth it. Amen? Christ is worth it. Would you stand, church? We believe in this church that Christ is worth it, that Christ is enough. And that it, there that needs nothing else with that. Just, just Jesus. It's awesome. I love when God works out things all in order. Because, Pastor Adam, when we didn't coordinate as far as like songs to be picked, but when you picked a song called gratitude and saying that all that I have is just a hallelujah that is all that you need that is all that this woman needed and she was singing I believe in you O son of David so maybe there's some of you that haven't been walking in faith maybe you don't have it all together like I've said if that's you right now, would you just lift your hand? And there's no need to look around or do anything. This is just between you and God. If some of you would say, I want to come back to God, or I want to come to God for my first time, I want to make him my everything. I don't have it all figured out. I don't think I know exactly what to do in all circumstances, but God does, and he's all that I need. Thank you. I see those hands. I see those hands. Now in this church, something else that we believe in is uplifting people and standing with people to dig together. Amen? So let's all pray this together. Father, I love you. I see you. I believe in you. I believe in the sacrifice that you've made. I believe that you are coming again. I believe that you are the only way to heaven. And I believe that you're willing to forgive me of all my wrongs. And you are there for all of my problems. I love you, Jesus. In your precious, in your mighty, in your holy name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Come on, it's Super Bowl Sunday. It's Super Bowl Sunday. We have just won souls for Christ. That is something to uplift and be happy about. Amen? Amen. Now, maybe there's some of you guys that, that, that have things going on and, and, and problems, so I would invite the, the prayer partners to come forward. Let us partner with you. Let, it, let us be with you and, and, and take on the struggles of life together and let us lead you to Christ. Now, if, if you have made that first choice of that first step going towards Jesus for the first time, or maybe you're just coming back, I urge you, please connect with the pastoral staff. We want to walk with you. But again, if the prayer partners could come forward and, and, and be ready to pray with those that, that need, I urge you guys, do not wait. Don't wait on Christ. Don't wait on him for a single other second. If you've got things going on, we are here to point you to Christ. And we're going to worship too. If you guys have to leave, you can slip out quietly and everything. But I urge you, if you want to remain here in the presence of God, you're welcome to do so. I thank you guys. Amen. And bless you all. Hi friends, it's Pastor Drew, and thank you for joining us for Church Online today. Hey, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, congratulations! We're excited for you, and we'd love to know. So please reach out to us. Also, if you have a prayer request, we will pray for you, so reach out to us about that as well. You can go to our Facebook page or Instagram. You can watch past videos of our services on our YouTube channel. God bless you, and I'll see you next time.